We've talked for the last, I don't know, 48 hours about celebrations, celebrations, <laughs> celebrations. I didn't see too much of that on the broadcast. Julie, you were, as you say, in very, very good seats. What did you see on the celebration front? Um, they're definitely in Carly Lloyd's first goal. She came over to the, the sideline, to the bench, and she gave, she gave a little golf clap to which they <laughs> golf clap back to her, which I, I thought was pretty funny. I actually uh, just interviewed her when they returned to the team hotel, and I said, tell us about that goal celebration after the first one. And she's like, yes, it was a golf clap. <laughs> Lindsey Moran told me that the whole sideline was going to do a golf clap, and so I went over to them and did mine as well. And she said, we were just having fun, of course. How was Carly's morale after she gets to start? We knew that she would go gangbusters mm -hmm. in this opportunity to showcase why she should be a 90-minute player game in and game out. What were her feelings following the match? Well, I did ask that. Kate, I said... Uh, you know, what message do you think you sent to the coaching staff tonight? And she goes, I feel like I've been sending this message a lot. <laughs> and it's not, she didn't say, she didn't say, and it's not getting through, but it was kind of that tone, like, how many more messages do I have to send? Um, but she said, look, I, I feel like this is the best version of me, was her exact quote. And I got 90 minutes in, and it's not about records, and it's not about the goals. It's about the team doing well. And I just feel good, and I want them mm. to know that and to see that. And I try every time I get in there to show them that. So, um, you know, she's feeling confident, and it is a really good version of Carly Lloyd. I'm not sure it was better than the three goals in 16 minutes. I don't know how you top that in a 2015 mm. World Cup final, but it's an excellent version that we're seeing right now. So Carly Lloyd is definitely sending that message. Kay, you've been pretty clear, though. You don't think Jill Ellis is going to move her out of this super sub role. No, I don't, because the way in which the U.S. plays, Carly Lloyd is a very good nine, but her as a nine, it, it's not a build-up playing nine. It's a, I'm going to go and attack, and I'm going to be a target and a weapon on set pieces. There are plenty of other weapons as well that can fulfill that same role. So collectively, it seems from what we've seen from Jill Ellis, she feels like the team is better as a whole. What with everyone performing rather than having Carly Lloyd in the lineup. But I always say, imagine being on the other team as an opponent, and all of a sudden Carly Lloyd comes in off the bench. I don't care who you are. And as a former defender, you're like, oh, dear God. <laughs> you know, like, because you know you're going to have to physically match up and be ready for those long-distance shots because she's so quick on that release. It is really difficult to get your foot up in a way that you're not having a terrible deflection that might even go towards your own goal. Yeah. We haven't really seen this U.S. team super tested yet in this tournament. Julie, I wonder where you think they'll be yeah. tested the most against Sweden. Well, we haven't seen them collectively defensively at all they've had most of the ball and I know you know when you talk to the back line of this U.S. team which in the earlier part of the year was quite leaky to be honest with you I think that was one area of vulnerability everyone pointed to with this team coming in they gave up two goals against England three against France two against Japan uh, three against Australia so against the good teams they were giving up a lot of goals uh, but the one thing they always talked about when you talk to Becky Sauerbrunn or anyone on that back line they would say you know yes we're focused on the back four in our goalkeeping position but we're also focused on our team defense and so they haven't literally had to defend in these uh, in these first two games and, and clearly the Sweden game will be at a different level for them so how do you even with all the confidence you get from these games you haven't been tested at all and I'm, I think they're probably looking very much forward to actually having a chance to get tested in that way. Hey, what do you think we'll learn about this U.S. team against Sweden? Well, I think it's key what Becky's saying. Becky's saying that, listen, the last time we were in this situation, we played a 4-4-2, so we had an extra player that was responsible for midfield mm -hmm. defensibility. Like, those, that was what is important to them. Now they have playing the 4-3-3, one less player that's concerned about defense facing all these transitions, all these counterattacks, and that's been their biggest weakness as a group. So the question for everyone is how are they going to stop these counterattack transitions, which they have not been strong at? Against Sweden, you're going to see that. You're going to see a, the best Sweden team with Rolfo coming in on that left-hand side, plays for Wolfsburg, very talented, and how they can handle and defend set pieces. So it's going to be a good challenge, and it's going to be interesting to see who ends up topping the group after they pace, play each other in the third group game. Julie, I know you're very busy. You got a lot of interviews and social events to attend to. Any final <laughs> thoughts uh, now that we've seen the U.S. for a second time? I've been following your Instagram. I know what you're up there. 
<laughs> I'm a very important person. I don't know if you guys knew that. Um, I, I think that the one thing I take away in those first two games, when was the last time a team, any team in a World Cup, has been able to play 20 one players in two games. So every field player has gotten on the field. And of course, Alyssa Nair, the only two players on this roster of 23 to not play are the two backup goalkeepers. I mean, that that's tremendous. And you're going with six points. They knew this was going to be an easy first two games for them. But I think as we've talked about this whole tournament, depth is going to be huge. They still have five more games, hopefully, if they're going to make a full run and they're going to need every one of those players. And that's why getting that confidence and getting them that time might have been huge today, even if it isn't testing them defensively. For more, sign up now for ESPN+.